Hey, you guys, welcome to this episode of The Rachel Cruz Show. And today we're gonna talk about the FIRE movement. And if you're not familiar with this, FIRE stands for Financial Independence Retire Early. And obviously I'm all about financial independence and I'll admit retiring early sounds pretty great. But like most things, if they seem too good to be true, sometimes they are. So we're gonna unpack it. And I'm gonna react to a video of a couple who plans to retire at 35 years old, which is a pretty radical goal, you guys. And I'm just so curious, you know, what their level of sacrifice looks like in order to even make that possible. So we'll unpack that together. And also I wanna talk about what I recommend that you do if you want to pursue a fulfilling, stable retirement, like most people, most of us do. All right, let's see the first clip. I don't really like to buy anything. In fact, it kind of makes me anxious. Every year or two, I'll get a new pair of running shoes. The last time I bought running shoes is actually a used pair. <laughs> We've decided to invest in maybe cheaper hobbies than most people. Eclectic as ever. As eclectic as ever. Okay, well, first of all, Tanner seems really happy. <laughs> and he definitely looks happier than I do when I'm running, so good for him. Uh, but something he said that stuck out to me is that he said, buying things makes me anxious. And then he goes on to say that he does everything he can to not spend money to the point of buying a pair of used running shoes. Okay, so right off the bat, his mindset is a little different than mine because for me, using a monthly budget and living on less than I make and controlling my spending gives me the freedom to be able to spend some money on things that matter to me. So again, whether that's generosity or making a memorable family vacation together, or even a little Amazon package here or there that sparks some joy, you know, whatever it looks like, I wanna be able to use my money intentionally for the good things in life. And personally, my goal is not to completely minimize all spending all the time. So my first impression is that we may be a little different here in our goals, but let's keep watching. My name is Tanner Furl. I'm 29 years old. I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I plan to retire at the age of 35 and I've saved $380,000 for retirement. Okay, so in this clip, he explains that he's 29 years old and currently has $380,000 saved and plans to retire by 35. It's interesting because I'm curious if he has enough to live on, right, when he retires. So I'm kind of curious about the rest of his plans. So let's see the next clip. My personal brokerage account has $221,000 in it. My Roth IRA has $57,000. My health savings account has $26,000 in it. And my 401k has $75,000. A lot of people in the FIRE community have really definitive FIRE numbers. For me, it's a little bit more flexible. My lower bounds for retirement is $625,000 because I figure I need about $25,000 a year to live. Okay, so here he breaks down exactly where that $380,000 is coming from based on his multiple retirement accounts. And he also mentioned earlier in the video that he's a part of what's called the Lean Fire community. And this means that he's part of a group that wants to reach retirement as early as possible, even if that means drastically changing their lifestyles to reach that goal. And he said he's aiming to hit $680,000 saved in retirement so that he and his family can live on $25,000 a year. Oh, I mean, if that's what you want to do, go for it, right? I don't think it's like a right or wrong, but again, this idea that we're gonna retire early, you think of retirement as like taking vacations and traveling and visiting family all over the country, and you can't do that at $25,000 a year. So that's one thing. Okay, and another thing that I'm wondering about is that earlier in the video, he told us that he makes $135,000 a year as a software engineer. Then he says that he's currently saving half of that every year. So my question is, when he retires, he's gonna go from living on $65,000 a year to $25,000 a year. So they're cutting down their stuff even more. And then again, even if they're paying on debt of some kind. So, so I'm interested to hear more. My parents just gave me a loan directly. So when I graduated from college, I worked on paying that off for a number of years. I believe the interest rate was 3%. It took me about five years to pay my parents back. I could have done it faster had I wanted to, but I figured that the difference would be better spent investing in index funds. 
Okay, that answers my question about student loans. Yep. So it sounds like he borrowed money directly from his parents and then paid them back over five years with an interest rate of 3%. And he says that he could have paid them back faster, but instead put money towards index funds. And that's a big common thing that a lot of people say, well, I'd rather invest my money and make more interest, earning more interest than I would what I would pay down my debt. So they try to kind of justify that where, again, I'm all about debt elimination regardless of the interest rate or regardless of the amount, because having no debt and not owing anyone anything is even better than having money and letting it grow. So that's just my thought. Okay, so before I share the next clip, I wanna tell you about a new game that I am loving. It's called Telestrations. So you guys, I played this with a group of friends the other day and it was absolutely hysterical. So what it is is basically the old school game of telephone and Pictionary combined into one. And I'm telling you, it is so funny and it's so easy to learn. And the age range too, you can go from like little kids all the way up to adults. Like it really ranges on who can play the game, which is one thing that I love. So start making lasting memories today and buy Telestrations at Walmart or wherever you buy your games. I took fire to an extreme that I, I, I think generally it's safe to say is unhealthy. I would get very, very anxious about saving as much money as humanly possible. I would get really, really anxious about making more money so that I could retire as early as possible. I put things off in my life that I really wanted to do in order to try and, and retire even earlier. I would spend all of my free time trying to make money. I had these ideas for side hustles and I was doing those things not because I enjoyed them, but because I thought that I'd make a lot of money. And um, when those things weren't panning out, it led to a lot of frustration. All right, this clip was a little bit of a longer segment, but I thought this was so fascinating, you guys. So he admits taking this mentality to the extreme, especially in the beginning. And he talks about how making as much money as possible just wasn't fulfilling. And I totally agree with him on that one. I'm a big believer in balance and it's important to be wise with your money, but it's also important not to become so anxious over it to the point that you're like hoarding it or overworking yourself just to earn more and more and more and more, right? Because that can leave you really unfulfilled at the end too. So actually, I really agree with you, Tanner. All right, in the next stretch of video, it's several minutes long, but I think it's really relevant to a lot of you who are working the baby steps. So I'll do a recap of what he says. So first he says that they were able to pay off their full mortgage by renting out the downstairs part of their house on Airbnb. That's some money coming in. Second, he mentions that they participate in a food donation program in their city that gives people a car load of unused groceries for $25 a month, which is amazing. And I know people that do similar programs with garden sharing and all of that they have in their neighborhoods. And he even shouts out rice and beans specifically as a healthy option. Dave, you'd be so proud of Tanner. <laughs> All right, and then finally, he says that once their friends and family caught on to their frugal tendencies, everyone started finding and offering them free furniture and other supplies like strollers and electronics. And it's really interesting. You know, in my book, Know Yourself, Know Your Money, I talk about money tendencies. And for some people, they're more that like scarcity mindset. Some people are more abundance mindset. So if you're kind of interested in this fire movement, I would be curious where you fall on the spectrum uh, because I think it's just a fascinating thing to understand how you're wired with money and certain people are more drawn to these things than others. But this is just a testament to exercising financial boundaries, you guys, and eventually, People not only accept their money goals, but they were able to help them get there, which is really encouraging. All right, let's hear what he has to say at the end of the video. So one more clip. I think a lot of people look at the FIRE movement and they think that a lot of these people are just not living their lives at all because they are just so busy stashing away money. I don't think that's a fair representation because in life there's no short supply of experiences. Most experiences that will make you happy are probably free or, you know, extremely cheap. Obviously, money can put a roof over your head, put food on the table, but when you're saving money, you're essentially buying freedom. So the best way that you can spend excess money is ironically by saving it to give you more time in your life back. 
Okay, yep, he speaks a lot of truth here. So in the end, money is best spent on experiences and creating more time and memories with loved ones, which I agree. And I'm glad that's where his focus seems to be because I'll be honest, that's a thing that gave me pause with the FIRE movement, that even if you're retiring young and living on really little, can you provide for the experiences that you want in life? So I do wonder if living on less than $25,000 a year is the best option throughout all the years of life. And like, will he ever miss working and producing something? I don't know. Because I know people who, you know, were wise enough with their money to be able to retire early and they got into their late 50s and 60s and they were bored. They actually went back to work because they wanted to do something with their life. So I think there's a rhythm of working hard that's just good for our character and I think keeps you young still. So yeah, it'd be fun not to have to be dependent upon that income when you're older like that and have the money to retire. I think that's a noble goal and one that we teach in the baby steps. But I'd be interested to see if Tanner and his wife kind of navigate all of that here in the next few years. So I don't know, you guys, it's a really interesting thing. I think there's parts of this movement that I really love and I appreciate their intensity and their focus. But I don't think like running away from a job or a career is always the answer. I think you can find a job that you love, letting it be part of the rhythm of your life. But I also understand having choices and options to go do what you wanna do is really empowering. So I think working towards both is kind of that key thing. But again, getting out of debt, not owing anyone anything, that's a big part of having that autonomy and having options in life. And that's what we teach here at Ramsey with the baby steps. So. I think it's fascinating, and if you thought it was fascinating, and also if you're impressed with Tanner's investment habits, remember it's never too early or too late to save for your retirement. So you wanna be able to do this as quickly as possible. So go to RamseySolutions.com, and there's an investment calculator there that gives you a picture of how your money will grow over time. And the earlier you start, even with a small amount of money, the better it's gonna be thanks to compound interest. All right, you guys, it's a very fun movement to look at, the FIRE movement. So I wanna hear from you guys. Comment below on if this is something that you would ever take on or if your approach is different. So remember, you guys, to take control of your money and create a life you love. <laughs>